Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to From Our Scrap Bin. Now, guys, I am kind of cheating a little bit today. I am using an SCT sampler uh, papers that came in the kit from last month. Um, and that is because I can't find my scraps. Um, so I am in the midst of rearranging some things in my room and I moved my scraps and condensed them down and I don't know where they are. So I'm kind of cheating. I'm using these six by six papers from my SCT sampler because I uh, guys like who in the world knows. Now I do have some photos from Thanksgiving 2020. Um, these are our DOA lobsters. They arrived dead. So we ended up going and buying lobster tails from Costco. So this these two photos are going to go on a layout, and then this one is going to be on this one, and this is going to be about the DOA lobsters. So let's see what I can do. All right, guys, so I am going through the 6 by 6 papers that came in my SCT sampler kit, and I'm just figuring out which ones I want to use. Uh, I decided that I had too many crosshatch papers. Uh, even though I really like that yellow one, I decided to go with the more bolder yellow pattern here. So I am going to take all of these papers and I'm going to trim them down into one inch strips. And then the, uh, uh, the rest of the papers, these three by six inch strips, I will use for something else. No idea what yet, just something else. So I have these strips down and um, I just am deciding to do some sort of weird pattern with them. Haven't figured out entirely what, my original idea was to stack these all together, but then as I was putting these down on the paper, I decided that it would be fun to put them in sections of three and have them kind of staggered down the page. So I'm just going through, I'm trying not to create the same exact combination of papers in each cluster that I'm making and then this top one was literally the only one where I made the paper fall over the edge. Um, I probably could have just pulled it right on back over and did it um, from edge to edge but you know I wasn't thinking about it at the time it just didn't happen you know and and stuff like that happens. So now I am going to figure out which one of these papers I want finally down. I trim off that edge. I think about putting these vertically for about a minute, but that doesn't really happen either. I figure it looks a whole heck of a lot better with these horizontal. Now I am going to mat my photo on yet another one of these six by six papers, and I am matting it on this pink uh, paper. I do add an extra photo mat because as you can tell, it's kind of getting lost on there. Um, I do pull out these letters. Now these are really old letters. These are from Daisy D's. Does anybody remember Daisy D's? Um, they were supposed to be punch out letters so that you could use them, um, and, but you know, I kept them. Um, I was cheap back then and I'm cheap now sometimes <laughs> and I um, trace these letters out and cut them. Now I am using the spring loaded Fiskars scissors and I'm still mm, I'm still not I'm, I'm not sold on them yet you guys. Um, these scissors make me want to turn my wrist um, instead of holding my wrist steady and just opening and closing the blade and I don't know if it's just because it's a different type of scissor. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but I'll figure that out shortly. I've only been playing with them for a couple days, so, you know, the jury's still out. I forgot to trace the inside of that letter A, so I had to quickly put that bad boy back on there. Um, I am going to go ahead and use... Ouch, I just dropped it. I am going to go ahead and use a pin blade. I said ouch. The blade was closed, so don't think I, like, cut myself or anything like that. But, um... I did use the pen blade to um, fussy blade, as my friend Erica likes to say, the insides of the letters out of there. Um, and that's just because it is a little bit easier than poking a hole with your scissors and cutting it out. Um, I do use a really old Making Memories eyelet setting mat. So I have two of these eyelet setting mats. One of them I've only cut on and one of them has eyelets and cut marks on it. Um, and they're such, like, they're nice, thick, good, thick quality. 
So I've still, I've held on to them for all of these years because, you know, they're still great. Um, so now I am going to go, I'm actually going to get up, you guys, and walk over to my extra adhesive and pull out these little foam uh, rectangles. Now these uh, came from my friend Amber. She went to the dollar store and picked them up for me and gave me a bunch of them, which is super exciting. Um, I did go ahead and trim one of the foam rectangles down so that it would fit on the letter A a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and pull the backing off of these. Now I did think about for about 2.3 seconds inking the edges of these letters just to give them a little bit more definition. Ultimately I decided against it and figured you know it was fine the way it is. Now this is where I mess around with the photo a little bit. I'm just trying to figure out where the heck it's gonna go. If there's another layer I can use to layer it up, I'm like, I need something, I need something that is going to give me a good separation. So I go to my stash of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I pull out a black sheet. I cut it down to four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then I decide this is going to give me that extra pop and definition that I need. So now that I have added this black photo frame, I know that I'm going to need to add more black onto the layout because I can't have just this one boom in your face bit of black and nowhere else. So I already know that we're going to be adding black some other places on the layout. Not exactly sure where yet. Um, I do grab the SCT sampler pack right here. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck I can do because um, this layout needs a little bit of embellishment. Um, so I have this pocket that came in the kit and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to layer up a, um, a piece of paper in here. I'm going to put my journaling on it and then we're going to be good. Now, my idea was to grab some grat, some grad some graph paper and place it on top of that green paper but then I decided you know what there's tags in this kit why don't I just use the tags so I go ahead and use this plain white tag of course you know that we cannot have a naked tag hole so I'm going to go ahead and put this embroidery floss through the tag hole and just uh, put it on there it's not going to be a bow tie because I want you to be able to move the tag in and out of the pocket so I just journal and um, my journaling says the lobsters were dead on arrival. I blame FedEx because they arrived super late. Main Lobster Now was awesome and gave us a credit so we could replace these bad boys. We ended up buying tails from Costco to make steak and lobster day happen. And I totally do blame FedEx, you guys. Like the lobsters were supposed to arrive by like 10.30 a.m. or something and they didn't get here until 7-ish, I want to say, 7 p.m. that night. Um... You know, they're going overnight from Maine to California, so, and, you know, you can sit there and say, well, you should have expected that. That's all the way across the country, but you know what? We've ordered multiple times from Maine Lobster now and never had issues um, getting live lobsters delivered. So, totally FedEx's fault. I totally blame them. So now I need to embellish. So I'm going to go into my stash and I'm going to dig and find things. I do have this black label that ends up going over here next to DOA, which is the title. And I layer up this um, enamel. Uh, it's like an enamel circle with a metal rim. They're, they're the new brads with a Z. Um, that don't have tines, brad tines on them, but you know, really they're just enamel things with circles. So it doesn't end up staying there. It ends up going to the top of the page, but for now it's fine. Um, so I am going to look through my stash. I'm going to grab a couple things. I grab this, um, this word phrase that says this is hard and it's meant to be like one of the let's stay home collection stickers. And you know, Getting dead lobsters for Steak and Lobster Day, that's hard, okay? I don't know if you guys know, but Steak and Lobster Day is Thanksgiving. So since you don't get deliveries on Thanksgiving, we always get them the day before. We um, partially cook them that night, and then we finish cooking them the next day. Now, yes, that does not mean you're going to get the most absolute tender lobster you can ever have. However, if you're not doing lobsters for Steak and Lobster Day and you're just doing lobsters randomly, 
totally get them, cook them on that day, there is a difference. There is a difference between that day and the next day. But you don't ever want your lobsters to arrive dead. You don't want to cook dead lobsters. You want to be the one to kill them. <laughs> okay? That's, that's the way it's got to be. So anyway, steak and lobster day. Um, these arrive the day before. You know, it's that, that day, the night, or the night before. And they were dead. Dead. Dead as a doornail. So I, I was at work and my husband went to Costco and um, found lobster tails. Um, so we still had steak and lobster for Thanksgiving, but it, it, you know, it wasn't the same. I'm just going to say it wasn't the same. Um, I do dive into my stash. I have some wood veneer. One says choose happy, one says smile, and one is a camera. And it is in a diagonal um, down my page from the upper left to the lower right. And then I'm going to add lots of black enamel dots as well, um, just because I really am introducing that black color onto this layout. So there it is, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click the links down below to see um, everyone else who is playing with pieces from their scrap bin. Or maybe they're cheating like me. Who knows? But, you know, I gotta find the scraps. I don't know where they are. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again real soon for another video.